Hello, everyone. This is Juan Carlos, and welcome to Trail Unedited, where we highlight amazing coaches, athletes, and everyday people from the trail communities for unscripted and unedited conversations. Uh, today, I have the honor of speaking with a tremendous athlete who I greatly admire and know that most of our listeners do as well. Uh, Ryan Atkins, probably one of the most famous Canadian athletes, in my opinion. Uh, Ryan recently competed in the World's Toughest Race Eco Challenge Fiji Team Adventure Canada, placing second place. Uh, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Uh, welcome, Ryan, to Trail Unedited. I greatly appreciate you taking the time uh, to speak with me today. How are you? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I'm doing well. I'm excited <laughs> to be on the show. And uh, yeah, do it. So, um, why don't you introduce yourself? You know, it's one of those things where people are interested in knowing is who is Ryan Atkins and how did you get started in athletics? Sure. Um, yeah, my name is Ryan Atkins. I'm uh, 32 and I'm from uh, Ottawa, uh, Ontario, Canada. Um, currently living in Sutton, Quebec. And uh, yeah, I guess I've been like a, an athlete my entire life um, from um, playing, you know, team sports like hockey and football and soccer growing up and then uh, transitioning to uh, rugby and wrestling and football in high school and um, starting unicycling, stream unicycling, mountain uni unicycling, and then mountain biking, racing, um, <clears throat> I raced a few World Cup uh, events, um, so um, like top level mountain biking there and then I uh, switched over to kind of ultra running <clears throat> and trail running and then eventually uh, OCR and um, yeah, love the journey. Um, was Eco Challenge Fiji your first adventure race? So, uh, yeah, Eco Challenge was, I think, my third adventure race. I had done a 24-hour uh, adventure race in Ontario um, that actually Bob Miller puts on, who was our team captain. And then I had done, um, what's it called, Untamed New England, I think, in 2014, if that sounds right. Um, might have been 2015 or 16. It happens every two years. And uh, anyway, it was a while ago. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so and then on Team New England was uh, like, a, they call it a three to four day adventure race. Um, and then Eco Challenge was like a full on expedition race. So uh, yeah, we were out there for seven days. And um, some teams are out there for up to 12 days. And so uh, definitely the longest race and event I've ever done and the first like true expedition adventure race I've done. Wow. Now, how were the team members selected for uh, the team? Uh, how did you guys come together? Yeah. So Bob, uh, Bob and Scott, who are um, two of our teammates, uh, they had done the previous eco challenge in I think 2002. Um, and they were just, you know, itching to come back and get some redemption because they both had to drop out uh one of them is i think bob was for um jungle foot rot it's pretty nasty oh, okay. and i forget why scott had to drop out but it was you know something like that and um yeah so they were looking for redemption and i used to actually work with bob um we worked at a company called mud hero together building um building obstacle races and him and i always got along really well um i did some of his adventure races and we hung out and uh just loved spending time with bob and He's just such a great guy and really a legend in the adventure racing world. And um, yes, he is. <laughs> yeah, and Bob was kind of like Ryan. If like if we ever had the chance to race together, like it would be amazing. And I was like, yeah, I agree. It'd be awesome. And then yeah, the chance came up, and Bob asked me if I wanted to do it. And I was kind of like <clears throat> really on the fence at first because I knew that it would probably interfere with like my obstacle racing kind of calendar. I call it championship season starts in like September and like there's just a bunch of big races with like tons of prize money and they're really important races and kind of like the biggest um most important races of the year all happen right in that time frame of kind of when Eco Challenge was supposed to happen so at first I was not too sure and then eventually I kind of came around to the idea and then we were looking for a female and um and I said well I think Rhea would be awesome and Bob and Scott were kind of like, well, I don't know, like, she has really no experience with adventure racing, and she has no experience yeah. with uh, mountain biking, and she has no experience, you know, with this and that, and I was like, yeah, but she's super tough, and super fit, 
and she'll just do whatever you tell her and just keep going forever <laughs> and be positive. <laughs> and, uh, and sure enough, Rhea was awesome. So um, it was a little fortuitous, like the way our team kind of came together. And then we got uh, Wayne uh, Leak, who was our TAC. Um, and he had actually done some of Bob's races uh, as well. So he has adventure, adventure racing experience. He kind of knew, you know, what to expect, the ins and outs. And, um, yeah, he was he was awesome, kind of like uh, the, the mother hen, <laughs> just taking care of us all as we went along. So, yeah, it was a really fun team to be a part of. And everyone was just – everyone was just always so, like, concerned with everyone else. Like, how is – you know, how is Bob doing? How is Rhea doing? How is Scott doing? Like, yeah. and what, what can we do to make the whole team go faster? So there's never any – kind of ego or any like you know diva moments or any um no one ever really got upset at each other and i think all our personalities just kind of meshed really well together yeah um that that that's awesome and i wish that we all could have seen that if they would have just you know <laughs> put you guys on tv a little bit more <laughs> yeah i know it was kind of interesting watching um from my perspective because i was like watching the show and I was like oh like they missed this and they missed that and like not only did they like obviously miss what our team was doing which um you know was like racing and racing for the podium um from day one we were actually in first place uh when we left the island on day one for like an hour and the Kiwis passed us right at where they you know had to dive down and get the coin um but yeah we were like full on in the lead for you know <laughs> of the race and uh and still they, I guess, didn't peg us as like one of the teams to follow. We think we were just like, there was no drama on our team and we were all just like having a good time and stuff. So maybe that's why, but um, <laughs> yeah, there were so many sections of the course too, that they just like kind of skipped over and like blazed over. And I was like, Oh man, like in my mind, like that was a super epic, like moment or time of the race or like yeah. this and that, that they like totally missed. And, uh, but you know, they're the professionals and they're the editors. So um, Bob Miller, I don't know Scott well enough, but Bob Miller is a legend in the adventure racing world. I mean, when you go to an OCR race, a lot of people know you and you have a lot of friends there. You all high five each other, give each other hugs, and it's just a great community, great, you know, human connection, interaction. When you went and you arrived at uh, Fiji, what was different? I mean, because, I mean, you're not known to do adventure racing, right? I mean, how was it yeah. going into that when, when you stepped at Fiji and uh, it's a, a whole different atmosphere, a whole different ball game for you? Yeah, I mean, I I loved it. I love being unknown and being an underdog and being kind of yeah. in, out of my element and things like that. So I was just, yeah, I loved it. I loved, uh, yeah, having to like, talk to people and like make relationships and like learn people's names and um yeah because in OCR I guess it's uh a lot of the interactions are a little different and it was kind of cool coming um you know meeting people kind of face on and and I didn't I didn't honestly know really anyone from the adventure racing world either I didn't know like <laughs> I didn't know who the superstars were or who the world champions were or yeah anything like that so I was just like hey man how's it going like <laughs> <laughs> like it's funny a lot of the interactions were like around it was a big buffet style breakfast every morning at the at the hotel and so a lot of the interactions with the other teams would happen <clears throat> around breakfast so it was like getting your espresso and like meeting people or like getting your eggs and like oh where are you from and stuff like that so it was really cool did anybody recognize you as the as the famous ocr athlete ryan atkins <laughs> Um, yeah, I think maybe like two, two or three people did who were there, but yeah, they're like, Oh, do you do that Spartan race thing? And I was like, <laughs> maybe? <laughs> Who's asking? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Even in Fiji, you're well known, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is awesome. Yeah, well, there, there were, there were really many local Fijians stopping and asking for my autograph, so I can, I can tell you that. <laughs> um, Clearly, you formed the best team you could have. Is there anything that you would change for the next time? And will you be competing at Patagonia? 
yeah, if Patagonia happens and if our team's accepted, I will totally go and compete. I would love to compete and I would love uh, another chance to speak for challenge. Uh, um, what would I change on the team? I wouldn't, I don't think I'd change anything about our team. Um, honestly, like <clears throat> we gained so much experience uh, in that race working together yeah. and we went into the team, we went into the race having only, we spent like one weekend together as a team training and then that was it. And then we just went there and raced. So um, like I had like, yeah, we'd never really spent any time together, all four of us, uh, any considerable time. So like every day we got better and we got smoother and we got faster and we learned things and learned things and learned things. And um, yeah, by the end of the race, we were like, wow, we're so much better. Like, <laughs> you know, so uh, I would just take that, those lessons and kind of move them forward um, into the next race. Um, how did you train for this race? And did you know what to expect? We I mean, like of course rough... you have Bob Miller with you. Yeah. Yeah. We had like a rough idea of what to expect. Um, I think my biggest, so, I mean, I did a lot of running and I did, uh, uh, I did a, like some big efforts and a lot of mountain biking and, um, some paddling. My biggest kind of downfall I think was I didn't paddle enough and I don't know why I did this, but, I kind of treated paddling like, like, I don't know, just like a, oh, let's just go paddling and like kind of cruise <laughs> around and like, that's nice. And like, like I probably paddled a total of like five times or six times getting ready for that race. And none of them were like structured. None of them were like very long, maybe like maybe three hours was like the longest paddling session. And uh, yeah, it was really apparent our, I was like, oh, I'm I'm strong enough, like I'll be fine. But like, we weren't. We were pretty bad at paddling as a team, and that race was so paddle intensive. Um, we spent a ton of time on the water paddling, like like 50 plus percent of the race. And so, yeah. um, teams that were strong paddlers, like the Kiwis, made up a ton of ground uh, there. And yeah, so if I was to change my training, I would incorporate a lot of a lot more paddling probably like two or three times a week at least and i would incorporate drills and intervals and you know specific things to make myself better at paddling and in hindsight it's like it's so obvious because in every other sport i've ever done if you want to get better you a do volume you do a lot of it and b you like structure intensity so like and I just didn't do those things. I was like, well, paddling, like whatever. Um, but yeah, it was like, so I should have been doing paddling intervals, going hard for a minute, going easy for a minute. I should have been doing more repetitions, more volume, you know, working on technique, working on this, working on that, because it was pretty apparent out there that we were pretty bad. Scott was our like good paddler. And uh, I think he was pretty frustrated by the end because like, <laughs> He did. He had three people who were just like lily dipping along, and he's like <laughs> going for it. So, yeah, sorry. But you guys weren't the only ones. There were a lot of teams that probably went through the same ordeal that you guys did. That they were just not good at paddling, and then some, something yeah. that like you like you said, they 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 didn't put a lot of training into because they saw it as paddling. Oh, we're just gonna yeah. paddle, whatever. Yeah, there's nothing totally. to it. And like. Yeah, like I've paddled, like, like uh, as Canadian, like you paddle canoes and kayaks and we have so much water that like, I ha I know how to be in a boat and I know how to paddle a boat and things like that, but I've never raced. Um, and I think that's the difference is like, I've raced running and I've raced mountain biking extensively. And like, I know the difference between like racing and just going out for a leisure cruise and like with yeah. kayaking or canoeing, um, I didn't really know that difference. And it was like, and like the other thing to be fair is like most adventure races have like you know 40% trekking, 40% mountain biking, maybe 30% paddling or like maybe even less, maybe 25% paddling. Um and this race was you know 50 plus percent paddling. So there was just a lot of it. Um wow. and a lot a lot more than typical. So yeah, that was kind of like not really good for us either. But there were also a lot of water obstacles that you guys had to deal with. 
I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm going to jump out of my question format here, but like, what was the difference between you guys and the Kiwis? When you guys say, uh, we're talking New Zealand here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, what was the difference between the both of you guys? I mean, was it experience? Um, yeah, probably. I mean, they've been racing for like years and years at a high level. And this was like kind of our first race as a team. I think, uh, yeah, we definitely were lacking a ton of experience coming into the race. Um, and yeah, I'd say experience and just like exposure. Like I know Bob hasn't really raced in like, you know, five, six years and those guys race several times a year. So, um, it's just easier to be spot on with your navigation, with your transitions and all those things when you're racing all the time. It's like, if I didn't do a running race or an obstacle race for five or six years and I just jump back in, there's like all these little nuances and like skills and little things you do that add up to a lot of times that you don't really like think that much of until you're racing. Um, so yeah, I would say experience. Was there anything that you weren't prepared for? Uh, any incidents or difficult situations that happened along the way that they didn't show on TV? Mm, I don't think so. Um, yeah, like there was hard moments in the race and there was moments when like we thought we were lost or we thought we were uh, whatever, like the river section, the river swim, that was hard and uh, pretty cold, but like we got through it and none of us got hypothermic and I don't know. We just kind of like took everything in stride and kept going. I think going into an adventure race, you know that there's going to be times when you mess up and times when it gets really hard and times when uh, things aren't going your right way. And everyone on our team like knew that and everyone on our team was like used to dealing with those situations. So when they came up, they were just kind of like no big deal, I guess. There's a there's a, um, a a stage in that race where a lot of teams suffered. Apparently, my understanding is that the water um, there was one kilometer uh, that you all had to walk in water, and it was really cold. But that wasn't one kilometer. My understanding is that from talking to a lot of people that come on have come on that it was close to an 8K walk in cold water, freezing water, and a lot of them developed or got hypothermia. How did you guys deal with that? Um, yeah, so like, yeah, I'd say it was about, felt like eight kilometers. We were in that water forever. And it was uh, like, there was a lot of sections where you were forced to swim. So you were fully submerged um, for like extended periods of time. Uh, and then, <sighs> you'd come to a little like choke point where you could get out on some rocks and scramble along and then, <clears throat> excuse me, get back in the water and keep swimming. Um, so Rhea brought a, a wetsuit top and she put that on and the three of us, we just swam and um, yeah, it was cold and it was long and it felt like it was never going to end, but um, like we just kept going and eventually got through it. Uh, I don't know. I've been like really cold before and, um, of course. <laughs> yeah. For a long period of time, like in world stuff is mutter. You're like that for 24 hours. So it was like, like, Oh, this can't be that bad. Like we'll get there eventually and uh, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I think you just kind of like trust that it'll eventually end. <laughs> and just like, you're like, well, this river can't go forever. Uh, I know. and yeah. I don't, but, but I, to be honest, I don't, I wish I had like some nugget of information, like, oh, uh, we, you know, <laughs> dug deep and like reached out to our ancestors and they <laughs> gave us the secret of warmth and that carried us through, <laughs> uh, to the finish line. But like, I don't, it's just like, just like <laughs> putting, one, you know, one foot in front of the other and kind of get through it. Oh, that's funny. Um, <laughs> let me just, I, I want to go back to the, um, one of the things that we talked about earlier on. So um, as a second place team, um, you, you really didn't receive much camera time. Um, so what are your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that I think that the producer, 
the film crew. I, so I know they had like a list of teams that they like wanted to follow, and there was teams that were like, and it was mostly like the winning team, and then like a bunch of like kind of human interest teams of people um, of course. that they thought were interesting, like uh, Iron Cowboy and like um, people like that. And then I think they had some other teams that they thought would do well, like ahead of time, and that they were like, we can kind of follow them. But I don't think we were, we, our team wasn't really on either of those lists. And um, yeah, I guess we were just like mega underdogs. Like no one really thought we would do well or whatever. And I think by the time it was like, you know, the last second, last day, last day, and like we're in second place and um, things are going well for us. Uh, they had just not really been following us and not gotten enough footage to really tell that story. Um, and so they kind of went towards other stories. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a bit of a bummer because like yeah. we did really well as a team and um, it would have been cool to kind of showcase that. But I guess for me, it's like not as much of a bummer because I like had so much fun. I like, I got to experience it firsthand. I got to yeah. see all like a hundred and whatever hours of it, like through my own eyes. And I got to, so like, Oh my god, it's great for me. Like I got to see everything, but um it would have been cool to share that with, you know, a wider audience. Yeah, I mean I I I agree, but also, I mean, you are in a different platform. You're in a different sport. Now you got the world watching and you had mm -hmm. Canada watching. <laughs> what Canadian wasn't ticked off when yeah. All you saw was like a, like not even a second of you guys, and then that's it. And then they go into another team, and uh, right. And it's like yeah, and there was there was like they showcased like seven different American teams, um, <laughs> which is which is fine, but like I don't I mean, think they made it. <laughs> there's other countries there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't think those teams made it, but. Team Canada came second. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> um, to complete an adventure race, I would imagine that you need a strong mental uh, game. Uh, yeah, mental yeah. game, which is vital. Um, what is your approach to mental training? What do you think about during races? Um, yeah, so yeah, during like Eco Challenge, um, <clears throat> I thought about a lot of things because the pace is so much slower than like a, a you know, a normal race that I would do. Um, you're kind of given this opportunity to be a lot more in your head. And, um, and yeah, it's just like thinking about how, I mean, for me, I was just always thinking about taking care of the rest of my team and like how I can make our team move faster. So like, what can I do? Can I take someone's pack? Can I go filter water for someone? Can I push someone up a hill? Can I, you know, like, what can I do, like, right now to help everyone? Um, and then, and then other than that, it was, like, just taking it all in, like, watching the sunrises and, you know, seeing the local people and interacting with them and um, doing all that stuff. Because it's such a long race that if you don't take the time to, like, experience the culture or, and the... Uh, and the environment around you that it would kind of drag on forever. So yeah, yeah. It's just like, just like kind of like go on autopilot and just like enjoy the ride, I guess. This race has had a way of exposing people's weaknesses. It doesn't matter what stage you were in. It just had a way of exposing people's weaknesses. Was there ever a time that, one of you or any of you um, were faced with a situation where you had to like, you know, come together as a team and say, oh man, damn, we may not make it or we may have to uh, cut this short. Yeah. I mean, we had a, definitely a few of those moments. I think for us, the worst of that experience uh, would have been on the last day we had to paddle um, at Rigger Canoes out into the ocean about 40 kilometers to an island hit a checkpoint and then take a left and go over to the finish line and we had been awake for i don't know 36 48 hours at that point and um like we knew the finish line was so close so we didn't want to sleep 
but also we were just so tired and it was like it was like being in hell it was we just kept falling asleep in the boat and then waking up and then falling asleep and like you like it was like it was wow. just like the worst the worst <laughs> the worst experience because like we wanted to be awake like you want to be awake so badly but like your body is just like just keeps falling asleep and there's like nothing you can do about it and we at one point were like got ca- caught in a current that was like pulling us backwards and like oh, we wow. didn't know if we were going to the right island and we were like kind of hallucinating and we were making mistakes and yeah it was crazy um so that what? was that was really rough we were it seemed like we were out there forever uh and um but yeah we eventually made the finish line but yeah there was like six hours maybe more that just dragged on forever oh wow and they <laughs> didn't put this on tv <laughs> my god yeah <laughs> uh, hey what is your approach to nutrition while you are racing and uh how did you make sure that you had enough fuel to keep going yeah so every um there was four camps on the uh on the course and so Um, so there's five legs, four camps, and every time we hit a camp, we would see our TAC, uh, and you had to stop for, I think it was 90 minutes or maybe two hours, like mandatory stop in these camps, and so we would, like, take care of our feet, do all that, but it was also time to, like, eat some food and kind of reload our backpacks, and so for me, I was just bringing with me a bunch of different stuff, some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, some like baby formula, some like sports nutrition stuff, some um, maple syrup, like all sorts of different uh, foods from like kind of all sorts of like stuff that you can carry and that travels well and doesn't get squished, but also stuff that like some stuff that's sweet, some stuff that's savory. uh, And I would just load my backpack up with enough fuel for however long we thought the stage would be. Um, and then I'd add like maybe six hours of like emergency food in case yeah. we were longer than we thought. And, uh, and then you just take off, um, at each camp, you would get the map and the instructions for the next leg. So we would have a pretty good idea of like, I mean, most of the legs were taking around 24, 36 hours. So, um, Yeah, I mean, it was pretty pretty consistent, but, like, when you see the map and you see how much distance you have to travel and, like, what the terrain's like, you get a pretty good idea of, like, oh, okay, we're going to be out there for whatever, 30 of hours. Of course. So, yeah. Um, what is your favorite and most memorable moment from the race? Ooh, favorite and most memorable. Um, I'd say on the last mountain bike ride, uh, like, the whole last, So we had to mountain bike for like maybe two, two and a half hours. <clears throat> and then we had to do that like jungle loop with the rappelling. Yes. Come up a wall, get the medallion, come back, get back on our bikes and then ride another like two, two and a half hours. Yep. And that whole leg was just so cool. Like the riding, it was mostly on dirt roads for the first section, but like that was pretty cool. The, the jungle loop with the medallion, that was super awesome. Really fun rappel. I got to be the one who climbed up and got the medallion. And then the next mountain bike leg after that was like, it was so awesome. We went by this boulder that was like the size of a football stadium. Like it was like blew my mind and we r- rode this big descent and then we got on these like massive, like climb, descent, climb, descent. Like it was really fun. And then we got to come down um, into a village and transition to stand up paddle boarding. So like that, that whole section, I was just, I was loving it. I was feeling really good. I was like, pushing people up the hills and I was like, yeah, it was awesome. That was probably my favorite part. For me, another, uh, I guess, special moment or moments where was the, the way the Fiji people came together and whenever you guys reached uh, a stage, they would line up in a lineup uh, and watch the teams come in and they would cheer for you guys. That was like one of the best things that I've seen. And yeah. I'm glad that they incorporated that and allowed that interaction with the athletes and the competitors and all. Um, what, how was, what was your experience with the people there every time you got and you finished the race, uh, a stage or you got to a, yeah. When you finished the stage. Yeah. You know what? Like the Fijian people, um, 
So I guess the way Fiji kind of works is you have like the outside of Fiji, which is all these resorts and stuff and like bigger towns. And in those towns and resorts, like people were nice, but they weren't like, I don't know, it was like kind of normal. Um, they would talk to you and whatever it was. But then when you got to the interior of Fiji, into the like, the villages um, where like very few visitors go, yeah. the people were just so nice and so enthusiastic and so excited to have you there that it like, it really like gave me like a renewed sense for like humanity. Um, it was just, it was just awesome to see. Everyone was, I was like, oh man, if like, if everyone could like, if the rest of the world could just like channel like a tenth of like the positivity that these people have, like the yeah. world would be so much better place. Um, so yeah, that was, it was just really awesome. <laughs> yeah, truly. It, it, every athlete, every participant, every competitor out there, team uh that was able to you know interact with the, the fijian people everybody just had a smile on their face and the, and, the, and the fijian people the way they would come together and offer you guys uh food <laughs> the majority yeah. of the time right did you eat any oh yeah <laughs> how yeah. was it good <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was good um and one night that's so the first i think it would have been the second night there was like man the whole course got shut down because of the flash flooding oh yeah and we were in on the billy billies with the other like top maybe five teams and they pulled us ashore at a village and we actually got to go in and we slept in like some random lady's hut in her village and she was like giving us all like sweaters and sweatpants from like her husband and like bringing us tea and like bringing us food and we're like oh my goodness like this is like we don't need all this stuff but (laughs) but that is so sweet of her yeah yeah she like literally has like yeah i mean they would you'd you'd look at them from like a north american perspective and say like oh she has so little but like what she does have she's like just like ecstatic to share with these strangers so it's pretty cool you know that human connection is priceless, and uh, to see you guys experience that is um, was awesome. It was awesome to see that uh, <laughs> through the screen. Through, um, what is your biggest inspiration, and what keeps you going when things get difficult? Um, ooh, I don't know. Biggest inspiration. I just, yeah, I just kind of when things get difficult, I just tell myself like it'll get good again and <laughs> keep going i don't really um like think about like inspiring things or anything like that i just uh i guess like my friends and family and my wife and my yeah. dog and you know things like that i would like think of and draw like energy and good good energy from from them but um yeah just keep going oh buddy that's wonderful i'm glad <laughs> that you mentioned the dog there <laughs> Yeah. Hey, how old is your dog now? He's seven. Yeah. Seven. Wow. Yeah. I I remember yeah. seeing at, at Battle Frog your dog. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah, that's how long it's pop. been. <laughs> yeah, I know it's crazy. <laughs> Do you have any uh, shout outs that you want to give? Yeah, Special I mean, um, mentions. Yeah, definitely to uh, my wife and my dog. Um, <laughs> Lindsay and Sunto, um, and then all my sponsors, um, Human, the makers of Beetle Eat, they're awesome, and uh, also sponsored by Riverbend, they make CBD, which I use for recovery, and um, BJ Shoes, which uh, any adventure racers out there who aren't, who haven't tried BJ Shoes um, should definitely look into them, because they're super grippy, grippier than anything, um, <laughs> awesome shoes, and uh, and yeah. If people wanted to know more about you, where can they go? Um, probably the best place would just be on Instagram. I'm Ryan Atkins Diet. That's me. That's yeah, it. Follow everybody. along. That's it. Yeah. Follow <laughs> along the adventures. <laughs> Always up to something new. Oh, buddy. So listen. Uh, before we go, now you said that uh, if you're if you guys are selected uh, to go to Patagonia, you're gonna go. Yeah. For sure. Now the same team with Rhea. Same. Same team with Rhea. Yeah. So did they tell you when they'll 
make the announcements and uh, let uh, notify everybody? Um, they said, I don't know. It's always like, <laughs> it's just the way it is. They say like soon, and then they say like two weeks, and then they say like soon, and then they say like, well, maybe soon, and then they say like, and then they're like, oh, so, okay, this is the deal. So, so. Do you think it's going to happen I mean, with COVID and all? I don't know. I hope so. Hope things <laughs> eternal. I've heard things that are saying that like the whole, that they're not going to do the show, um, but I'm not going to like get negative about it until I yeah. hear like from from the organizers. Yeah. If you're wearing a mask and gloves, you should be fine. Yeah. <laughs> I figured they could just make their own like, like kind of like eco challenge bubble. And um, in Patagonia, like we're not going to see anybody. It's just like, you're Nobody. just out in the middle of nowhere. Just That's like, right. Going up mountains and like so it's not like we're gonna like spread COVID to like villagers or anything like like Fiji would have been a lot harder because you were constantly seeing people. Um, That's right. Yeah, I agree with you. Be like, oh, just be careful of the crevasse and like <laughs> have fun. Yeah. Hey, have you been to Patagonia? <laughs> no, I haven't, but I'd love to go. Oh man, that's amazing. Oh, have um, you? Did you ask if I have? Yeah. Oh, no. I, I heard so many good things. I mean, I'm from down south. Uh, I was raised in Ecuador. And so I had a lot of family members that have gone down there uh, to run and trail. And they just amazing experiences and amazing stories. But the one thing that they say that you did mention is that you're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Nowhere. So if, if, <laughs> if, if, if you're looking to find a little town, uh, no. No, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> And you're going to love it. This is, I mean, to, to get into adventure racing and go do Patagonia, yeah, you're going to have a lot of fun. But that's yeah. going to take a certain, a, a different type of training for you to do that, wouldn't you think? Yeah. I actually think that um, the, like, climate and uh, challenges that they might have us do in Patagonia would suit our team a lot better than what we experienced in Fiji. So That's right. Pretty excited for it. Wow. I can't wait. I, w I really do hope that you guys get selected. Uh, that'll be just awesome, and I I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that they're gonna be putting a little bo a lot more spotlight on you guys. Yeah, I think so. I think so too, <laughs> uh, Ryan. You know, we've come to that point in this uh, interview where uh, we come to the end, buddy. I mean, it's been such a pleasure speaking with you. Um, I learned a lot. Uh, in your experience at the World Toughest Race Eco Challenge Fiji. Um, once again, I'm inspired by you, buddy. Uh, I wish you the very best uh, in your training. You. I do hope that you and your team um, get selected. What Canadian doesn't want you guys to get selected and yeah, head down there again? On. I mean, we want to cheer you guys on. <laughs> we, I mean, we can't be there. That's one thing. <laughs> but we'll tune in. Um, I wish you the very best in your training, you and your and your thank team. You. And I can't wait to see you guys get out there and race. Um, I thank you to all everybody listening. Uh, I hope you guys learned as much as I have. Um, get out there and train and enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Ryan, once again, thank you so much for making time for me uh, to speak with me uh, coming on trail and edited. Thank you so much. Uh, you and Lindsay have yourselves a good one. And I hope that we can do this soon. Yeah, thanks so much. It's been a pleasure. Take care, buddy.